Today we have a very, very special guest. Big L Aceves. Welcome, brother. Thank Welcome you very to much Local for, for Christ. Me. Let's invite Jesus to be with us. Amen. Open us up in prayer, brother. Lord Father God, in your precious Son name, Jesus Christ, yes. we thank you for letting us be here today. And everything that comes out of my mouth, let it be for your honor and glory. Yes. We ask a blessing on everyone here yes. and a special blessing on those that aren't here. Yes. And we plead the blood of Jesus over everyone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, briefly, just so that the people know the caliber of a person that we have here, Big Alice uh, well, goes to the river's edge, and also you were the founder of the Mongols. That's correct. Yeah, and uh, but now you're you're now you're serving the Lord Jesus Christ and just letting everybody know that it's what it's all about, right, brother? Yes, sir. All yes. right. Well, talk about what you're doing for him today. Amen. Well, I'm, all right. First of all, I would like to say what an honor. And privilege it is that I get to share here and I want to thank you very much for having me here today and before I go any further I would like to share this scripture because what's going to come out of my mouth for some people is going to tell them there's hope and when you have hope or when you rejoice in the Lord there's something you have to do so out of Psalms 34 I will bless the Lord at all times his praises shall continuously be in my mouth Okay, let's see. I was born in El Paso, Texas, in a little part of Texas they call Segundo Vario. It's pretty well known. Anyway, my mom and dad, they didn't get along. My, my dad used to beat up my mom. You know, I'm sure it's the same story for a lot of people. So my mom went and lived with her father. They moved to L.A. right here in a little street called Glass Street. Right across the street from where we were at, brother. Yeah, right there at Liso Village. In Liso Village. Yeah. So we grew up there for a little while in the apartments. Then we moved to Second and Lorena. And in Second and Lorena, when I was growing up, I had a grandfather who was vicious. And he would beat everybody up. And one time he beat me so bad that I said to myself, no one's ever going to get that chance again. And I grew up always trying to hurt somebody first because that's what he taught me. Uh, one time I was in a school fight and he was watching me and when I came home he beat me up. He said you should have hit him first. Too much talking, this and that. He didn't hit me because I was, on the f I was in the fight. He hit me the way I fought. So as I grew up my mom mar married my dad and we moved to Monterey Park and I used to go like on the weekends horseback riding and stuff and before you knew it, I was in a gang. And, and I was in a little gang called City Terrace. Back in 1968, Holmes came to man. It wasn't me. I, I was in Vietnam. In <laughs> oh, right. I was okay. in Vietnam. <laughs> Amen. Okay. So I was in the gang, and, and they kicked me out of one school, from one school to the next. You know, we would take those reds, smoke some weed, drink some wine. And I just kept getting kicked out of school, from one school to the next, just... I, no matter how hard I tried, I just couldn't do it. Something was missing in my life. Something definitely was missing in my life. And I couldn't get it. I was a Roman Catholic. I made all the sacraments. I did everything that the uh, Back up wanted. a little bit. So uh, your childhood, though, how was it more or less? I mean, you know, can you remember much of your childhood? Como estabas when you were young? Do you remember? I mean, how, what did you feel in yourself? You know, we, when we were small, we remember little things that, you know, how we were before things that motivated you. Do you remember anything like that? Well, I remember that, like, I would stay away from my family. Okay. And the guys were my family. You know, they all had the same thing. Either their parents were alcoholics or they would get beatings. In those yeah. days, you know, there was no law about spanking like yeah. there is now. Yeah. And like I said, my grandfather, we lived with him for a long time, and he was a sadistic man. So, like, I would stay away from my house. Even for years after that, I would stay away. But like I said, little by little, you know, I just kept getting kicked out of one school to the next. And my friends were the gang. That's it. You know, we all had the same problems. A lot of the guys had stepfathers. And, oh, I hate my step. You know, you go through all that. I hate them. I don't know why my mom married them. But, see, my stepfather and my mother were decent people. Okay. It was me that wasn't decent. Okay. It was, I made up my mind as a kid that I was going to be a gangster. That was always in my mind. I never wanted to be the sheriff. I never wanted to be good. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to be bad. And I made it. 
You know, um, well, would you say you wanted to be bad or you just wanted to be tough? Well, I would say both. 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 Okay. Because like at, I think it was 13 years old, I, I was busted for burglary, you know, breaking into a market at night, getting cigarettes and stuff, you know. And you did this because it excited you or you did it because you just rebelled or okay? I, I, I believe that I was rebelling, but I believe that it was exciting. Okay. At 15 years old, I took armed robbery. I started robbing with a gun, liquor stores, and they sent me to a place called Perkins up north. And while I was in Perkins, they sent me to a place called YTS. And YTS at that time was just for violators. So when they sent me down, I, I remember driving in on the bus, and you could see all the lights. They were having a football game or something. And so I was getting off the bus, and the bus driver stopped me. And he said, son, let me tell you something. He said, you're going to be the youngest man ever to come into this prison. You're going to be the, you're only 15. And I looked at him and laughed. I said, I'm not scared. And I walked in. Well, from YTS, I graduated doing worse things. You know, you hear everybody's story. And you say, oh, I could do that better than him. Or, or maybe I could do this. So I, I became friends with a, a priest that was there. His name was Father Del Vecchio. And I knew a guy outside. He would send me some, um, uh, what are they, like mosaics, you know, a mosaic, and it was glass. So I made one of the Virgin Mary, and I made one of Christ, and I gave it to the Father. And So, like, we became friends. We would talk, and he would ask me, don't you want to be good, Al? This, and I told him, nah, Father, you got the wrong guy. So from there, when I got out, I tried to go back to school, and that was a mess. I would just get in trouble every weekend, and the police bringing you home or locking you up, your parents come getting you. All of a sudden, the Vietnam War came. And when the Vietnam War came, everybody wanted to go to the war, everybody. It wasn't like now, I mean, everybody wanted to go. And because of my, um, my friends were all going to Vietnam, and I wanted to go to Vietnam, excuse me. I wanted to go to Vietnam. And what happened was I met a guy that told me how I could get to Vietnam. I told him I had a record already, armed robberies and a burglary. And he goes, don't worry, I'll tell you how to do it. So he told me what to do, and this is what I did. I went and enlisted for the draft, and they give you a paper. It's called a dream sheet, and they have all these places where you can go because you're enlisting for the draft. Europe, Germany, Japan, and I put Vietnam. Vietnam, Vietnam. I wanted to go fight. That was my thing, and get paid. So I went in, and when you go into the induction center, you know, they have you raise your hand and all that. But just before that, the guy goes, has anybody been arrested? And I raised my hand. And a lot of guys raised their hand, you know, guys that had women's underwear on, nylons. So they put us all to the side. <laughs> You know, I was with them guys, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I was right there. So when the sergeant came to us, he was all mad. He, he, he knew none of us wanted to go to Vietnam. And he looked at me and he goes, what did you get busted for? And I said, well, sir, one night I got drunk and the police took me home. And he pointed over there and he says, go over there, soldier. You're in the army. And that's how I got in. And I went to Vietnam and... I trained, I trained before I went over there, I was a paratrooper, and I, we took special classes on how to get people, how to arrest them. Well, they all thought I was a, I had advanced training because I knew, well, I just did what the police did with me, knock you down, twist your arm, and they thought I was, I had some advanced training. But I went to Vietnam, I was there in an advanced party. I went over there with the 3rd Brigade. And when I was first over there, we got hit. And they called me to go to the front. Actually, I was a point man. I was a buck sergeant, I was a squad leader, but I was a point man. That means you walk in front of everybody, and it's you, and then your slack man, and then everybody else. And so I, I used to walk up there front. I didn't, a lot of people said, oh, you had a death wish. I didn't have a death wish. I just wanted the excitement of the fight. Yeah, you more or less kind of made sure that nobody got hurt, but you were you were wise to take care of yourself too, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, it's like you're going to go hunt a deer. Exactly. You, you got to hear everything. Right. Yeah.